this lecture we're going to be talking about finance, saving, and investment. The syllabus includes talking about financial markets and explaining them a little bit. We're then going to talk about loanable funds and the loanable funds market, and then we're going to see what happens when the government decides to intervene in these markets. Let's get started by talking about financial markets. Finance is the activity of providing the funds that finance expenditures on capital. And we, when we talk about finance, we talk about how households and firms obtain and use financial resources and how they cope with the associated risks. Money is what we use to pay for goods and services and factors of production. And when we talk about money, we talk about how households and firms use it, how much they hold in their pockets, how banks create and manage it, and how exactly the quantity of money influences the economy. Physical capital is the tools, the instruments, the machines that have been produced in the past and that are used to produce goods and services in the future. Inventory, raw materials, and semi-finished goods are a part of physical capital. Financial capital, as we mentioned, are the funds that firms use to buy this physical capital, and the quantity changes because of investment and depreciation. Investment, which is the purchasing of new capital, increases the value of capital, and depreciation, which is a reduction in capital, in the value of capital, causes a decrease in the capital. Gross investment is simply the total amount invested within a year, and net investment is the change in the value of capital. Let's take a look at an example to clarify this a bit. So I have the important parts of the question highlighted already, but in essence, we have $1 million worth of owned machines already, and during the year, we experience depreciation of 30%. And then during the same year, we actually spend 200000 on new machines. So the question is, what is net investment? Well, let's take a look at the equation for net investment. It's simply gross investment minus depreciation. And so we already know our gross investment is given to us. It's 200000 That's the total amount that we invested in 2008. And then we have depreciation, and that's given to us a little bit in a different way. It doesn't give us an exact amount, but it tells us that the market value of our machines that we already owned, which is which were worth $1 million, they fell by 30%. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that we have $1 million multiplied by the fractional value of 30%, which is 0.3, and we're going to say that our depreciation was $300,000. Then we're going to take $200,000 subtract from it $300,000 to get our net investment of negative $100,000. Wealth is the value of things that people own. Income is the amount that people earn during a given period of time from supplying the services of labor resources that they own. Capital gain means that the market value of somebody's assets have risen and this generally causes wealth to increase. Capital loss is the exact opposite the market value of our assets falls, and so our wealth decreases. Savings is the amount of income that is not paid in taxes or spent on consumption goods, so it can be calculated as income minus tax minus consumption. For a country to make real GDP grow, savings and wealth must be transformed into investment and capital in the markets for financial capital. Savings is the source of funds in the financial capital markets. In the loan markets, households and firms often borrow money to finance more expensive goods. In particular, a mortgage is a legal contract that gives the ownership of a home to the lender, in this case, in most cases, a bank, in the event that the borrower, people like us, fail to meet the, meet the agreed upon loan payments, and this includes the repayment of the principal amount and the interest. A bond is a promise to make specified payments on specified dates. The buyer of a bond makes a loan to the institution and is entitled to the payments promised by the bond. When a person buys a newly issued bond, it can be held until the borrower has repaid the entire amount, or the person who buys the bond can actually sell that bond to somebody else. Bonds are traded in what is known as the bond market. And a particular type of bond that I want to mention is called a mortgage-backed security and a mortgage-backed security entitles its holder to the income from a package of mortgages. Lenders, like banks, can sell these packages of mortgages, called mortgage securities, so that they can actually issue more loans. The holder of these mortgage-backed securities is entitled to receive payments that derive from the payments received by the mortgage lender from the borrower. So to clear that up, if I 
take a loan and the bank has loaned me that money, but my loan gets sold to somebody else, that somebody else is entitled to the loan payments that I'm making because they have bought this bond. Now the stock market is a financial market in which shares of stock, cor stocks of corporations are traded, and a stock is just a certificate of ownership and a claim to the firm's profits, and this generally goes by percentage ownership. A financial institution is a firm that operates on both sides of the market for financial capital. They could be the borrower in one market and the lender in the same market as well. Banks are an example of a financial institution. Banks accept deposits and they use the funds to buy other securities and make loans, so they're borrowers and lenders. Trust and loan companies accept deposits and make personal and mortgage loans. They administer estates, trusts, and pension plans. Credit unions are basically banks that are owned and controlled by their depositors and borrowers. They're regulated by province or state rules and they only operate inside their provincial or state boundaries. They're relatively small in size. Pension funds are financial institutions that receive pension contributions of firms and workers. They use these funds to buy a portfolio of securities that they expect to generate income for them in the future. And this income is what is used to pay pension benefits in the future. Insurance companies provide risk sharing services. They enter agreements with households and firms to provide compensation in the event of accident, theft, fire, etc. They receive what is known as premiums from their customers and they make payments against claims. They, have, they use the money that has not been paid out to purchase other financial instruments. The profit is the gap between the earnings from premiums and the interest and money that is paid out to claims. Net worth is the market value of what the um, financial institution has lent minus the value of what it has borrowed. We can say that a financial institution is solvent if this net worth is positive, and we can call it insolvent if this net worth is negative. So that just basically means that it can't pay its debts and will go bankrupt if the um, lenders, if, if the loans that it has borrowed, if the lenders of those loans come back and tell them that, hey, we want you to pay these back, they won't be able to pay them and so they'll go bankrupt. Liquidity talks about how quickly um, we can turn assets into cash, into cold hard cash. Um, a firm is liquid if assets can be turned into cash quickly and is considered illiquid if assets cannot be turned into cash quickly. Financial assets include stocks, bonds, short-term securities, loans, um, collect and they're collectively called financial assets. The interest rate on a financial asset is the interest received as a percentage of the price of the asset. If the price of an asset rises, ceteris paribus, then the interest rate will fall. Because the interest rate is not set as a percentage, it's expressed that way. The interest is actually set as a dollar amount, and we derive the percentage from that dollar amount. If the interest rate rises, then the price of the assets falls, and then debts become harder to repay, and the net worth of financial institutions falls. Let's take a look at an example of calculating the interest rate. Let's say that I buy a bond worth $100, and I'm promised payments of $10 as my interest. Now to calculate interest, we simply take the amount of money that we receive in these extra payments, and we divide that by the price of the asset. So in this case, we have $10 that I'm receiving divided by the $100, which is the price of the bond. We multiply that by 100, and we get 10%. Now let's say that the value of my bond increases to $110, and this has nothing to do, by the way, with the $10 that I'm receiving. That's completely irrelevant. But keep in mind, I'm only still going to be receiving $10 from this bond. So that amount doesn't actually change. That is a dollar value which stays the same. Now the second interest rate, we're going to use the same formula. We're going to take that $10 that I'm receiving, that's not changing, and now we're going to divide it by the value of my asset, which is $110 and we're going to multiply that by 100, and we get 9.1%. So in this case, the interest rate has actually gone down because the price of my bond has gone up.